What's happening team? Now recently I created a new Lightroom preset pack which I'm currently selling on my website. Links in the description below. And I thought it might be quite fun and useful to show you some of the technical side of how to make a Lightroom preset pack that you can sell online. What recommended settings work for a wider audience and how to get them to market and what platforms to use to get your custom shop up and running. So let's crack on. So firstly you're going to need Adobe Lightroom which I presume you all have because you wouldn't be watching this video. So go ahead and open up Lightroom. Now the first thing you're going to require are some images. How many images depends on how many presets you want to make. So if you're going to produce a preset pack consisting of say 20 presets, then you want a minimum of 60 images to work on. That's three images for testing each preset. Now that may seem a lot or you might think piece of cake. I went on a photo trip last week so I can use all of those images. Well not necessarily. You need to have a good variety of images. You need to come up with a list of genres you think other photographers might be using presets for. For instance, street photography, landscapes, portraits, product photography, etc. And then choose three different images per genre. They could be shot at different times of the day, have different white balance. If you're choosing portraits, make sure those images differ either in skin complexion or gender. Are they shot outside or inside a studio? If it's landscapes, maybe include scenes with water and without. Shot either in golden hour or blue hour. You get the idea. And also make sure those images are raw files and not JPEGs because presets work better and function properly when used with raw files and have the most impact. So once you have all of your images in your folder, import them into Lightroom so you have three images per preset. Now the first and most important rule when making a preset pack is that you don't want to change the white balance sliders. Now why is that? Because you're creating presets that other photographers are going to use on a variety of their own images and each image is going to have very different white balance. An image shot correctly at 2700 Kelvin is going to look pretty strange if you position your preset white balance sliders at 9000 Kelvin. So make sure the white balance is set to as shot in the drop down menu. We can change the temperature of the images using curves without affecting the white balance as you'll see in just a moment. Now it's also worth noting here that when you compile your 60 images, make sure they have pretty good white balance because it will make your life much easier in the testing phase. Now let's talk about color because this topic is gonna to play a huge part in creating your preset pack. Now the biggest advice I would give when working with color is less is more. I tend to work with colors that are either complementary, analogous, or monochromatic. A good website to help with color theory is the Adobe Color website. Here you'll see those options I just mentioned. Complementary colors are those which appear at opposite ends of the color wheel. Analogous are the colors close to each other on the wheel. And of course, monochromatic are varying saturations of the same color. So how does this translate over in Lightroom? Well, on the HSL sliders, we have our saturation tab, which is going to be our first port of call. But just below the HSL section in the color grading section, we have a handy color wheel to reference, just like the one on the Adobe website. This is going to be your friend. So let's pick an image to work with. This London Marathon photo, an urban setting including people. First, I'm going to do a couple of basic adjustments, adding some contrast using the black and white sliders. Now the main colors in this image are the skin tones, which is generally going to be in this portion of the color wheel, oranges and reds. And I'd like my preset to have complementary colors. So let's reduce down all of the colors that are not the skin tones. And let's boost the color of the skin tones just to add a bit of vibrancy. Now, if we reference our color wheel, we know that complementary colors are opposite each other. The skin tones are in this region here, so that means the complementary color is over here on the opposite side of the color wheel. But we've already eliminated those colors from the HSL sliders the blues and cyans. And that's okay because we're actually going to be using color grading for this next part. Let's open up the shadows wheel and choose a color opposite from the skin tones. Here looks good. And that's introduced some nice teals into the darkest parts of the image. Now we have a draft of our first preset. So let's create and save this preset by going over to the presets panel and clicking this little add symbol. Then click Create Preset, which opens up the Develop Preset window. And because this is the first of many in our new preset pack, we need to create a new group. So choosing New Group, let's name our new preset pack. Something original like Preset Pack New. <laughs> 
Make sure all of the checkboxes are ticked and give a name to your very first preset like street, orange and teal. Then click OK. Congratulations, you've just created your first preset which will show up in your list. But we're not done yet. The preset needs to be tested on your two other images. So choose image number two and apply your new preset. And this looks OK apart from the skin tones being overly saturated in comparison to our first image. And the reason is white balance. If we look at the original raw file for a moment, we can see the white balance is incorrect. It's actually too warm. If we adjust the white balance to where it should be around 5200 Kelvin, the preset works perfectly. Now, here is why you shouldn't change the white balance when making a preset. If I'd created this preset using the guy in the baseball cap and changed the white balance to the correct position at 5200 Kelvin, then the marathon runner's skin tones would look too pink and washed out and we'd lose those complementary orange and teal colors. So the rule of thumb here is work on images with good white balance and if not, just be aware of where those white balance sliders should be for that particular image. Let's test the preset on our third image, the naked cowboy in New York City. Yep, that works pretty well. But say we want to make adjustments to the image, add more contrast, some more clarity, and boost the luminance of the skin tones. But we've already created and saved our preset, no problem. Head over to the preset and right click and choose update with the current settings. And this will override the original settings and save the preset with the new adjustments. And just make some final checks with your other images before you sign off on this first preset. Done. So now let's look at creating an adaptive preset for our preset pack before we start selling them online. Let's use this cityscape of the Shard in London. For my next preset, I want to create a specific sunset preset. So let's add some contrast using the black slider to begin, around negative 30, and some reduced texture because it's a landscape scene. But for this preset, we're going to be working with adaptive masks. Clicking on the masking icon, let's choose sky, and that's done a nice job of selecting the sky for us. And because this is a sunset preset, let's add some warmth using the color temperature and tint sliders. Now, I know I said not to change the global white balance sliders, but this is slightly different. These sliders are actually relative to the mask and not to the global white balance of your image. That's why these sliders don't have Kelvin values. So we now have a nice warm colored sunset, but only on the sky. Maybe bring down the highlights a touch, now it's important to rename your masks so that future customers will know what the masks are for. I'll rename this sky. Let's create some mist using a radial gradient. And I'm going to place this across the middle section of the image. Then reduce clarity, some negative dehaze. But of course this doesn't look right because the mist is covering the building and we only want the mist in the distance. If we choose intersect mask with subject and then invert the adjustment, the AI engine figures out where the subject is and excludes the effect. And because these are adaptive masks, whatever image you apply the preset to, it finds the subject within your image and adapts the mask accordingly. And this goes for the sky mask we created as well. So let's rename this to mist. But say we did want to change the global temperature of an image. How do we do that without touching the white balance sliders? Simple, it's by using tone curves. If we choose the RGB blue channel, let's drag the curve into the blues. And again, these temperature adjustments are relative to whatever global white balance the image has. Another tool at your disposal when adjusting relative color temperature adjustments is calibration. We can make things more yellow if we like, or more magenta. So have a play around with these sliders to see what combinations of colors work well for you. So again, let's create our presets and put it inside our new group and rename it Sunset Adaptive. This will make it obvious to your customers what the preset is for. This clearly is not going to work well on a studio portrait. And importantly, don't forget to tick the masking checkboxes so they are included in the preset. So once again, let's test the preset on one of our other images. The sky mask adapts well to the new image, the color is nice, and the mist filter is a movable object and still intersects with whatever subject or objects the AI engine finds in its path. Let's test this preset on one last image. And that looks very nice. Another thing you can do when making a preset pack is the ability to change the names of those presets. 
I realized I wanted to capitalize the headings so it looks a bit more professional. So once you've completed all of your 20 presets for your new preset pack, it's time to produce the folder which you're going to be uploading to the shop. So you'll want to right click and choose export group and choose a location for the folder and click save. That's it, simple as that. And here you'll see the exported zipped folder with all of your XMP files. You'll want to keep this folder zipped up for when selling on your shop. And speaking of selling, how do we get our newly developed preset pack to market? You could try using Squarespace, which enables you to sell digital content, which of course is a must. Another option is Shopify, where you can get started for as little as a pound a month with fees. Or the one I opted for was Selfie. With a basic monthly price of $22, you can sell up to $10,000 of presets per year with no extra cost, apart from the transaction fee when using PayPal or Stripe to receive payments. If you exceed the $10,000, then Selfie will get in touch with you and put you on the new business plan for $59 a month. The basic the basic plan still gives you unlimited products to sell, digital products, which is what our preset pack is, and you can connect your own web domain if you so wish. So let's assume you've opened an account with Selfie and you're ready to start selling your preset pack. Let's click add new product. And Selfie lets you sell a number of items, either physical products like photo prints perhaps, or you can print on demand like baseball caps, t-shirts, which they basically handle everything. You just upload your logo and they print and distribute the item for you. But the option we're interested in is digital products. Now I've already added my preset pack to the shop. So let's use a different example of a digital product, which I'm about to add, which is desktop wallpapers. Browse in your computer for the zipped folder of desktop wallpaper images and begin the upload. This folder has 15 high resolution images totaling about 66 megabytes in data. Now let's give our digital product a name. Mark McGee Desktop Wallpapers Volume 1. Then we can add a product description. You can go into as much detail as you like, whatever you think will add to the desirability of your product. We can also add artwork or images showcasing the product. I'll choose my main product image, which will appear first on the product page. Then we can add other images, just as if we were selling something on eBay. Then you want to set the price for your product. I'm going to settle on 15 pounds and you can set your currency and Selfie will deal with the back-end conversion rates for wherever your customers are based. You have the option to set whatever people want to pay if your fans are feeling generous. And of course, we can leave the stock as unlimited because this is a digital product, no inventory. Just for now, I'll make my new product invisible from the shop before I save the product while I check that everything looks okay. And here is how the new item will appear on your product page. If we click on the desktop wallpapers, we have the main image with the two additional images. And of course, these can be expanded for a better view. We have the price up top and the buy now button, which clicks through to the checkout. And you can pay with Google Pay if you have that set up or Apple Pay or standard bank cards. The email field is what Selfie uses to send confirmation to the customer with a download link. Although once purchased, you have the option to download directly from the shop. So let's look at my actual preset pack. You'll want to create some artwork, perhaps to show off the product. Tell the customers exactly what they're getting. 20 presets for Lightroom and Classic. Some of the presets include adaptive filters, so the latest versions of Lightroom will be required. And inform them that the presets are intended to work with raw files. And another feature that Selfie allows you to do is insert HTML code. So you can include a YouTube demo video of the product. So that's pretty much it. It really is that simple. It took me just a couple of hours to get the shop up and running and styled like my main website, uploading all of the artwork and images, writing the descriptions for the products and setting the pricing. It really is a pretty user-friendly experience on Selfie. So if you want to purchase my preset pack, I'll leave links in the description below so you can see how I compiled them and what settings I use. So thanks for watching. Hope this little video has given you a bit of inspiration to go out and create your own preset set packs and uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up for the video and hit that subscribe button below and I'll catch you next time.